Hey guys, this is part 4 of our uh, Marvel's Designer series and today we are going to make a bag. It will have this kind of circular base and the cylindrical shape. As a reference I have used this picture. It is some kind of military bag which I want to eventually make. And when it comes to references, try to use them as much as possible. Do not trust your brain and don't think that you can remember everything. Here you can see my final result. What we'll get at the end of this video. The only difference is that we're not going to make straps for this bag because uh, the process itself is quite easy, but actually tedious. So it just doesn't worth it. Here remember that we have two connected elements and we flipped the normals of one of the elements. And if we did it, the second one will also flip its normal. And it happens because of the symmetry and isn't very suitable for our goals. Thus it is actually better to work without any symmetry for a while to avoid possible mistakes. Next we are going through all the same steps. We sew elements together to make this uh, cylindrical shape. And for that we use the free sewing tool. The process itself is quite easy, it's like uh, shooting fish in a barrel. Here as you can see I have added two more elements for our bag. It may look a little frightening, but overall don't worry, it's quite easy. If we mess up, we will use uh, the wonderful Ctrl Z function and undo the damage. If the sewing lines look wrong, if they have an X shape, use the reverse function to fix them. That's what we have so far, and yes, it looks a bit intimidating because of the sheer number of elements and the interconnections. But again, don't rush it, think about the process as careful as possible. Simulating the bag. And for now, our masterpiece looks like a piece of duster or something like that, so it doesn't look very good. Uh, we simply apply as fusible rigid preset to our bag to change the material. In my opinion, it works best for something that needs to be stiffer than uh, what we have right now. And that's actually not all of it. After we change the preset, we're going to play with the pressure setting to find the best look for our bag. The right combination between the selected preset and the pressure setting should give us the most accurate result. For side pieces I have used one number for the pressure and for the central ones a different number. And now we have this bloated thing. Uh, be careful, if you move it too much it may fly away. Quite literally actually. Uh, to avoid this we use the pin tool to, well, pin it to the floor. To make it uh, stick to the floor. And now if we try to move some parts of our bag it will not fly into space, fortunately. And be sure to pin the bag in one plane, in other words, pin it directly to the floor, uh, to make this feeling that bag is actually lying on the floor. After that I change pressure to 4, decreasing it, because right now it looks too bloated in my opinion. I like what we get so far, we can continue working with details and add pockets, straps and other stuff like that.
Right now I'm creating the base for our future back handles, because obviously we need a way to hold our back. Don't forget that the same happens on the symmetrical side. We use the clone as pattern tool to make copies of our pieces in order to in order not to, uh, to do the same work twice. We also change the color of handles to gray for a bit of contrast. Here you can see that the base of our grip went under the, so to speak, skin of the bag. But we can fix it by changing the layer order. I think you remember that. I have also frozen the bag to avoid the deformations, unnecessary deformations for now, because it will be easier for us to sew on additional details. We're changing the length of the handles, but know that the length itself hasn't actually changed. But if we try to change it by moving the vertices, the situation would be different. For now it looks like this. Too flabby in my opinion, so I change the pressure again to make it stiffer. Now I'm creating the pocket and sewing it uh, on the back. Adding a new piece uh, for our pocket, do not forget uh, to set the layers to the number 2 and make the piece a bit rounder by using fold strength and fold angle settings. I guess it looks a bit too angular right now, something definitely went wrong here. I am adding a line along the back, for now it's just a placeholder, but in the future we'll add the zipper.
We took a bit of a risk and unfroze the upper part of the back, hoping that there will no longer be any problems with deformations. However, we failed, uh, as you can see, thus we freeze the back once more. And again, something is going horribly not right. I have checked normals, layers, pressure. Everything seems to be okay, but for some reason we are getting mayhem right here. So, in order to solve this problem, I'm working only on one hand at a time, playing with the same settings again, pressure, layers and normals, and looking for the solution. And just understand that logic is dead right now, especially in situations like this. I usually say, screw logic, let's mess stuff up. And after a while, a couple of minutes actually, it gave us some results, some decent results. And what was the issue? I have no idea. But I think that each software has some unique inner workings, even bugs really, which are hard to control and predict. So we just have to live with it and play with it. I'm creating a round shape here, which we'll achieve by playing with the pressure. I'm trying to play with inner seams, however it makes our shape a bit too angular, which isn't good. Again, I'm adding lines, adding a base for the future details. It's all about lines, and remember that the good combination of big and small shapes, details in particular, will give you the best result and uh, eventually an interesting model. But of course, most of the time we're working on details, because if there are few of these, the object will seem boring and unrealistic. Our eye will not be able to catch anything interesting. On the other hand, if we make too many details, it will also be bad, because in that case our eye will not be able to rest anywhere on our object. So it is quite important to find a good balance. It is especially true for characters. Uh, there you have to think about wear and tear, about the details of damage, about details which, which uh, tell us some kind of history about the character. And I'm constantly looking at the reference, trying to take uh, only the best out of it. Right now I'm adding straps to the bottom of the back, the process is quite easy, all the same tools, steps and settings. And I think we have already went through all these uh, settings and tools like 
23 times I've counted. All right, let's continue. Uh, what we're going to do next is some kind of cartridge belt, or it looks like it on the reference. I don't know whether it has any practical implication, um, maybe, but it looks cool, so let's just do it. I guess uh, here we can keep things like hammers, maybe screwdrivers, uh, wrenches, or stuff like that. Here's another reference, and that's what I'm trying to make. Only in this example, there are fewer of these sections. Ah, wait a second. I finally found the description of this thing. Uh, here's a page from uh, AliExpress. Here it says multifunctional tactic belt. Well, anyway, here a bit lower we can see that these small pockets are in fact used to hold different cases for maybe grenades, maybe mobile phones. In short, everything that is needed by the young terrorist. Well, even though in our case it's a bit illogical to have such thing on a bag, I'm still going to make it because again it looks cool. And I'm very lazy to remake this video. Again, I'm playing with the settings. I'm playing with uh, shrinkage weft, shrinkage warp. I'm not thinking too much about it, just doing because I can fix stuff later.
I have increased the width of this piece and also added the same piece on the other side, but without small pockets. Although it looks a bit boring, but it actually adds variety to the design. The next stage, optimization of our model, I'm getting rid of unnecessary details, collisions, chaotic elements, changing the size of different parts, looking for the correct balance, for the, for the correct combination of these parts. Overall, it's the final stage, we're finalizing the model, trying to make it as awesome as possible. So awesome to make our brain explode with awesomeness. As you can see, I have added a lot of inner seams and increased their depths, primarily with the fault strength setting. However, I didn't do it for the belt because it wouldn't look as good. I'm adding the top stitch here, uh, here are the settings. It's a really subtle detail, but uh, quite noticeable by our eyes. Let's add an uh, envelope shape stitches uh, here to make our pocket a bit more interesting. The same I wanted to copy on the round piece here, but for some reason it didn't work. I have suffered a bit and uh, in the end I had to redraw it from scratch. Now I'm deleting all unnecessary seams and we are almost done. 
I'm increasing particle distance, uh, then I'm playing with the false strength and, and angle to make our scenes deeper, so it could resemble our reference a bit better. Yeah, that's definitely better, even authentic, I would say. On the sides I wanted to create a zipper, but then decided to split it in two, because with zippers there are always some bugs and problems, and I just wanted to make my life a bit easier. And later I will show you some examples of such problems, don't worry. Here I got a bit tired and messed up, uh, started to make these envelope shapes in the wrong place, so let's just skip this part and take a look at the final result. Here it is, how it should be. I'm duplicating the pocket, we're almost there. By the way, the upper part of this pocket, you know, the one above it, is actually called the flap, and I learned it while I was making this video. And it is always like this with these tutorials, so you are just forced to Google some stuff in order to explain it better. For now, I hope you understand everything that I'm saying, and I'm at least half decent. Making seams wider, where we are going to make a zipper. Fortunately, Maros does it incredibly well, and even tells us the length of these lines. Obviously, these lines have to be the same. For some reason my normals in the zipper were flipped, uh, so I have fixed it. Next I'm adding depths uh, to the lines and straps to make it more realistic. I have unfrozen the bag, getting ready for the final result. And finally, changing color, choosing something for your liking. I will use maybe green color, something military like. Plus, I have also added the texture, normal map in particular, to our bag to make the surface more believable. And uh, that's it for today. I'll see you in the next lesson.